You're tuned in to the Dakota Housing Network on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. In-depth discussion and analysis of real estate issues nationwide and those issues unique to our area. Our team of experts includes Joe Sheehan, Greg Larson, Dave Floor, Brian Ritter, and a great variety of guests. The Dakota Housing Network begins now on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. And welcome to Dakota, House, Dakota Housing Network. We'll try that right. That's My right. name is Greg Larson, and you are... I'm Dave Floor. And we're here with Jim Walsh, Master uh, Jim Walsh. Yep. And okay. somewhere out cruising in he, the mortgage mobile is Joe Sheehan. Who's we have no idea him. where he's at again. But Jim, Jim's the most educated person in the room today. I am yep. officially among the ranks of the overeducated. All right, way to go, Jim. And congratulations. Thank congratulations you. on that one. All right. And Happy New Year. Thank happy you. New Year. Now, I have a question. Fire away. This was debated on, uh, since you said Happy New Year, this was debated on a, another show I was listening to on the radio about a week ago. Well, it would have been like, no, oh, it was probably last Friday on New Year's Day. They were talking, how long do you say Happy New Year? When should you stop saying Happy New Year to people? When people swear at you when you do it. Okay, that's your <laughs> indicator. So how soon does that happen to you, Greg? Usually on the second. <laughs> okay. Jim, when do you, when do people, what, what do you think? When should you start, stop saying Happy New Year? First week, I, I, in the first week, I'd say. Okay, all right, I would go with that. No. Okay, so I'm still safe today. You're still safe. Right. Now, the debate was other holidays, you know, you don't, you don't usually say Merry Christmas after Christmas Day. No. You don't say Happy Valentine's Day after Valentine's Day is done. You don't say Happy Fourth of July after the Fourth of July. So why do we say Happy New Year? Beyond, before New Year, you know, a, you know, after New Year first, January first, we say Happy New Year for, you know, a month. Some people are saying it to you. I gotta it, confess, I don't have a good reason. It's, it's just odd, a little odd, you know, because you don't know, you know, by January third, somebody could be having a really bad New Year. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, depending upon what happened to them. Well, it smacks that old George Carlin line. And some people don't would, offer me a happy day. Maybe I don't want a happy day. And depending day. upon what you did on New Year's <laughs> Eve, some people could be having a really bad day like a minute after the New Year started. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, we should talk about interest rates maybe. Okay. We're here. We're, That's we're the we're Dakota here, Housing yeah. Network. Right. We're not the Happy New Year Network. And we're interested in interest rates. Okay. Okay, interest rates. Uh, as always, folks, uh, we look at the Freddie Mac Primary Mortgage Market Survey for mortgage rates ending the week of January 7th. That's today. Yeah. Okay. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 3.97%. Uh, that was down from last week when it averaged 4.01%. Uh, a year ago, the 30-year uh, fixed rate mortgage is at 3.73%, so we're almost 25 uh, a quarter percent higher than we were last year at this time. So that's how much rates have moved in a year, basically. Not not too bad. Uh, pretty the, stable. Pretty stable. The 15-year uh, average 3.26%. Uh, that's up from last week as 3.24%. And a year ago, the 15-year was at 3.05. So still pretty good. Now, today, uh, from our friend uh, Barry Habib at MBS Highway, uh, of course, job numbers came out yesterday, and there'll be another report on other job numbers tomorrow. So he's got a little strategy, and he's saying float into uh, the jobs report that's coming out tomorrow. He thinks interest rates might, you know, it's kind of fluctuating. Carefully floating is what he's recommending. So probably that means if you're buying a house, going to make an offer, going and seeing your loan officer today, probably a good day to just go ahead and lock your rate in. It's yep. probably not going to change a whole lot. Uh, in the next couple of days here, so, but what's making the headlines this week, of course, Greg, is China. Yes, they're uh, um, struggling a little. Their stock market is struggling. Their stock market opened for only twenty nine minutes again today. Oh, I hadn't heard that. And then they have a circuit breaker, they call it, um, that automatically stops all trading. And this is the second time in the last week that that's happened with them. Um, they also had a was it a twenty seven minute shut off. They were open for 27 minutes earlier this week, and they shut it off. So um, so very volatile over there right now as far as what's happening. Everybody, like I think, wants to sell, <laughs> and the market's <laughs> not letting them sell. Um, and now what Barry is saying is he – actually, we're – I mean, our stock market has reacted to that by dropping. 
uh, significantly. Both the Dow and the S&P 500 has, have dropped quite a bit this week. Uh, but Barry's disappointed because the bond market hasn't followed that. And usually when a stock market goes down, that means that's good for bonds, meaning interest rates should be coming down. Well, interest rates basically, as we saw from the Freddie Max rate, really not much of a change in the last week. And they haven't really done anything different today. They're actually probably going to – could tick up a little bit today, um, possibly the way it's trending right away this morning. So it, it's an odd – a little bit of an odd occurrence going on here. Now you'd think with the stock market getting hit so hard that – the bond market would improve, meaning interest rates would likely drop. And that's not really happening right now. So we're kind of a little bit in a state of flux. So I think that's why he's saying carefully float. Uh, but the job numbers, you know, actually they came out of yesterday was the initial jobless claims, uh, which was looking at last week that came in okay. Uh, it was a little higher than expectations, but it was a drop from last week. Um, and the, the big thing there is that the claims show consistency. They're not going wild swings or a big trend up or trend down or anything. So it's very consistent, which is good. They like to see that. Um, now, tomorrow they're looking for 190,000 new jobs with a 5% unemployment rate, and that's basically pretty close to what it was last month, which they, you know, the actual number from last month. So they're not looking for anything strange to happen. And, of course, that's going to affect down the road what the Fed will do with interest rates. Um, now, yesterday... Uh, one of the Federal Reserve governors uh, that's a voting member um, came out and said that uh, clar- clarified something. He said, you know, a lot of people are saying we'll probably only hike rates twice in 2016. He actually says he sees height rates being hiked four times in 2016. So the question is, do they, the Fed, know something that we don't know when they look <laughs> at their numbers? And well, so that'll be interesting to see over the year how this plays out with the Fed and their interest rate hike policy going into 2016. Yeah. So, well, I, what we know for sure about their policy is that it changes re- frequently. Yeah. So, it, well, <laughs> and, and it has to. Yeah. I guess they have to adjust. It's just that it's so much in the news now that you know it's like everything kind of shuts down and waits until they make their announcement that week ahead of time, and you know we can't do anything. We don't know for sure what they're going to do, and yeah. But uh, yeah, they have to they have to adjust their plan, just like we all do have to adjust our plans sometimes because things happen. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so anyway, we got we we've got Jim about a minute. Yeah. About okay. A minute. All right. About a minute, Greg. We're going to talk uh, going into the next uh, segment. Uh, we've got some stuff on what it what is it what it costs to buy a home in North Dakota well, and the wherewithal and yeah, how much income of buying and selling homes in generates. North Dakota. Right. Okay. Right. Or how much income it generates right. to yeah. sellers and title companies and lenders and all that good stuff and and even realtors make yeah. some money. Yeah, okay. we well we try. Okay. We try. Good. Good. Okay. And as we go out, you should know that on this day January 7th, 1789 was our first presidential election ever. 1789. Yep. Really? Who yeah. got elected president? Uh Washington. Good man. Yeah. We should we should yeah. think about that a little bit. And as our presidential election is shortly coming up. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. First guy with wood teeth to be elected president. There we go. <laughs> Let's not elect another one with wood and teeth. And we'll be back. Okay. Right now, 21. Jim Walsh, live weekdays at 11 a.m. on Super Talk 1270. Okay, it's Kenny Loggins Day. <laughs> on uh, Dakota Housing Network. It's Kenny's birthday. What song is this, Jim? It's very quiet. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm free. Okay. Heaven help the man. Heaven help the man. All right, but it's Kenny Loggins' birthday. How old is Kenny Loggins today? 68, I believe. 68. 68. As everyone know, if you listen to our show at all, we are stuck in a little bit of a time warp with classic rock on this show. but We kind of are, yes. We, we like to yeah. celebrate the classic rockers' birthdays. Yep, when they come up. So Jim and Jim is our man. Yeah. He is our man. He's that. our research genius. Okay. Now we're Greg Dave Floor here with Greg Larson and Jim Walsh on the board. We're we're going to talk a little bit about the joys of home ownership and, and wildlife. Wildlife. And you, you can tell us a personal story <laughs> about uh, home ownership and wildlife. We, I I have to modify my term here. We have the toughest goose that ever tried to fly south. You used a stronger word as our neighbor. I did. Yeah. 
Uh, he, okay, he's, he doesn't want to go south. Well, a week ago, the ice plates on the river were shifting around, and this okay. goose got stuck between two chunks of ice. Oh, okay. And so he's stuck out on the river trying to get loose, and a bald eagle came in and tried to eat him. Ooh. And that goose fought it off, and I went to work, and uh, we had some company, and they were watching this deal. The goose got loose from the ice, okay. got up on the bank of the shore, and then eagle went after him again. Oh, boy. And now it can't walk. It's got a badly injured foot. Sure. So it can't run to fly. So it's beating on this eagle with its wings, and literal feathers are flying. <laughs> Uh, he got the eagle gave up and went away, and the the goose has gotten under a Russian olive tree and a bunch of briars that's sort of protected with these thorny branches and stuff. Mm-hmm. Nothing ah. can get at it. So we figured any goose that tough ought to have a chance to heal up. So we've yeah. been feeding the thing. sure. Well, good for you guys. And every time we go out there, he hisses at us and shakes his wings. And yeah. So my wife has named it Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, we give them another week. If the goose hasn't healed in a week, we're going to try to find where we can take them. If someone will take them and heal them, or yeah, if we yeah. need to call Game and Fish and decide his, his future. Fate. But yeah. for right now, he is definitely the toughest goose on the planet. Well, good, good for you guys. I mean, you give, like you said, you give him a chance to heal up. Yeah, and see what happens. But a you know, smart goose getting under the cover and yep, it, you can't uh, even you can't reach in and get him where he's at because sure. of all the Russian olive branches yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So we'll see what uh, happens. Well, nature at work. There you go. That's one of the great things about you know you got your home out there in the wilderness <laughs> and you see all these uh, wonderful uh, the nature at work. I guess there you go. Okay, so what else, Greg? You, we got how, how, how much money is earned when a home sells in North Dakota? Is that the topic here? Yeah, we just got these statistics. They're done uh, by the National Association of Realtors and they come out. Uh, they're about a year and a half behind. Oh, by the okay. Time get them all put together. Okay, but, but they do one nationwide and they do one for each. State. Okay. So here's when a home is sold in North Dakota, it generates an economic multiplier impact, which is a fancy word that means people make money when a house is sold. Yeah. All right. So there's greater spending at restaurants, sports games, charity events. The size of the multiplier is estimated to be in North Dakota, each house sold on, on the median, based on the median price of a home, $9,890. Okay. Additional money spent. Also, uh, home sales induce additional home production. Typically, one home is constructed for every eight existing home sales. So for each existing home sale, one-eighth of new home value is added to the economy because of the homes now that have to be built and generated to okay. replace that one. That's $22,375. Okay. And the uh, contributions are derived from the construction of homes, real estate brokerage fees, lending fees, title insurance, rental and leasing, home appraisal, business, moving, truck service, and other related mm-hmm. activities to getting around. So, uh, wait a minute, these are two pages here. Uh, the real estate industry in North Dakota accounted for 8503000 or 16% of the gross state product. This is 2014. Okay. So, say, uh, round it off, 17%. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the total economic impact of a typical home sale in North Dakota's medium-priced home is 179000 The total income derived from the sale of a home in North Dakota is $52,869. For one home? For an one existing home. home sale? Right. $52,000. Correct. Is, and you roll everything together. Wow. Yeah. That's... That's, that's remarkable. Well, uh, what's amazing about that is... Uh, um, that's the main reason why housing is one of the main drivers to get yeah. out of a recession. Yeah. And if housing slows way down, it's one of the main drivers to put us in a recession. Yeah, because you just named off a whole bunch of things that happen Yeah, on each home sale right. or could happen. Uh, there's some things that will always happen, and then you have other things that may happen. Right. And that's – it's a long list. <laughs> yeah, it is. So um, the the – the whole point of this is, and again, this is almost two years old now, yeah. the statistics that they base this on, but it just came out is that real estate isn't just owning a home. Real estate is a big chunk of our commodity 
market, yeah. income, gross national product, the whole deal. On a national basis, sort of the same thing. I just wanted to pull this up. Um, the real estate industry in 2012 accounted for 16.8% of the gross product for the United States. Okay, so very similar to North Dakota's number. Two trillion seven hundred ninety-four billion seven hundred twenty-nine million dollars. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, it's a big industry. Okay. So basically, nationwide sixteen point eight, North Dakota sixteen point seven of our yep. GDP. We, we track so, right with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, so obviously that probably holds across the country. Yes. Pretty much. There's no probably big like um, some state is at. California, actually, the Southwest, that's California, Oregon, Arizona. Okay. Um, so kind of the coast and then a little yeah, to the Southwest. And okay. Nevada. That area, they're like at about 22 point some percent. Okay. And so, that's the highest. Okay. So then you might have a place like, uh, you know, say Mississippi or somewhere like that where home prices are kind of a little more depressed. It doesn't. They're probably yeah. less, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's interesting. It's good to know. Um, yeah. How you know, and you don't think all, all you're thinking when you buy or sell your house is you're thinking just yourself. You know, what's how is this affecting me? How much am I gonna? Yeah. Uh, you know, make on my sale my home and buyers. How much am I gonna have to spend to buy this house? But then that the whole thing generates you know income to the lender, the realtor, the title company, the movers. Yep. The you know, you're spending a little, maybe a little more gas moving. Uh, what, what else was on the list there? Well, there's a ton of them, but um, the aftermarket issues too. You know, you're buying new carpet, you're buying new furniture, yeah. you may buy new appliances. You're, yeah. you know, all of that stuff yeah. all kicks yeah. in there. Yeah, it is. It is pretty interesting. Um, so real estate's good. That's the word. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's a very important part of our economy. <laughs> And and which makes sense. We all have to have a shelter over our head of one yeah. Plus, thing a or safe another. haven for a goose. But exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because if you weren't there, yeah, who knows what will happen to that goose? The eagle would be better fed, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, you know, the goose kind of saved himself from the eagle, but yep. you're you're taking care of that goose now. Hopefully, he will, you know, heal and be able to get away. Well, or then you will move on and let whoever should take care of them take care yeah. of them yeah i don't know that right. anybody wants to but we'll find yeah, out you'll find out okay um it, what else we got we got some interesting stuff uh dr lawrence jung is the chief economist for the national association of realtors and he put out his uh december 30th 2015 report he talks about pending home sales the reason they track pending home sales is because it's a fixed issue you know these are homes that have been sold that have not changed ownership haven't closed right okay so they do a lot of their research pegging pending home sales and where they're at so pending home sales in november and for the year declined slightly for the third time in four months uh reason being battle uh buyers this is nationwide mm -hmm. uh, both rising home prices and limited home inventory are the biggest problem the larger declines are in the northeast and the west, which yeah, you know, okay. we've seen that before. Um, he says, and by the way, at some point in 2016, we're going to have Lawrence on this program. Yeah. We yep. just haven't been able to figure it out yet. Yeah, okay. Uh, he says that November's dip in contract activity continues a modestly slowing trend seen ever since pending sales peaked to an over nine-year high back in May. Okay. So we had a good year in up to May, May. Yep. things have been doing a minus or a, a slowdown, and in the next section we'll talk about North Dakota and Bismarck Mandan and how that translates. Which, you know, people say the economy nationwide has been getting improving yep. very slightly yep. since then, but so it probably goes a little bit more to the home inventory issue. It goes it goes to the it. home inventory, and because we have a low inventory, it's pushing prices up. Yeah. on housing yeah so that's issues uh mortgage rates he says are likely on the rise which might slow the recovery of this no. in 2016 and uh, he said that 5.25 million homes should be sold in 2015 that's the highest since 2006 okay so but still lower than the the all-time peak in 2005 just before the housing yeah okay stuff in the south yeah. and other areas so 
Um, anything they they base this on a hundred on a hundred point. Uh, the Northeast de- decreased to ninety one point eight, so that's not good. They're low. Okay. Uh, here we're one uh, one hundred nineteen point nine. Okay. So we're still on the healthy market side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So okay. as we go to a break, we should know that today. Bill Clinton's impeachment trial began. <laughs> okay, in what, 97? It was not a good day for Bill. 97? 1997. Okay. 99. 99, okay. 99. Oh, yeah. uh, bad, bad day. Bad day for Bill. Bad day for Bill. He's, he's coming back, though. Yep. He's out there campaigning. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going away with Kenny Loggins. What's this? Footloose. Everybody knows this song. Right now, 21. Bobcat Hockey, live on the radio or anywhere with the Radio Pup app. Supertalk1270.com. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. Okay, this was, folks, this was Greg's request. This is my request. And Greg, you're going to tell him why. On this day in 1947, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, sung by the singing cowboy Gene Autry, was the number one song. Okay, this was not Kenny Loggins. This is not Kenny Loggins. It's Gene Autry. That's correct. I think Gene probably made as much money in his lifetime as Kenny Loggins wished he did. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Gene Autry was the was he the singing cowboy? Is that that's what was his, his moniker, the singing cowboy. All right. Okay. That's it. Well, that's that's interesting. It was the number one song in January. Number one song in January. It's, and it's a Christmas a, song. Yeah, it was written by a guy by the name of Johnny Max, who's had several chart. He, okay. He's a pr- pretty prolific songwriter. His top songs that he wrote: Rudolph the Red-Nosed mm-hmm. Reindeer, Holly Jolly Christmas, written okay. by Bur- sung by Burl Ives. That was number okay. one. And Rockin' Round the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee. There you go. That was yeah. number one. So go yeah. figure how this guy. He was good. Well, those he were his Christmas. number one songs. He had a lot of other stuff, a lot of rock and roll songs. but He had Christmas nailed. He had Christmas yeah. down. He yeah. had it. All right. Okay, folks, we're back on the Dakota Housing Network. Dave Floor and Greg Larson and Jim, Jim Walsh, Walsh and the master. Somewhere out in the Ethernet is Joe Sheehan. In the, in the Joe Mobile. In the Joe Mobile. All right. Look, right. searching for the lowest interest rate possible. That's what he says. Okay. All right. So we're going to kind of continue our uh, statistical thing. We talked about the year what, in how review. much income could be generated on a sale of one home. Right. It was like $52,000 in North Dakota. Right. 16, 17% of our GDP for right. the, on an annual basis. So it's a big deal. All it right. is. So now how many homes were sold in Bismarck Mandan? Interesting you should okay. ask. Bismarck Mandan. Let's go to Bismarck so, Mandan. So now think about this, folks. $50,000 a home. So put that into these numbers that Greg's going to talk about. Okay. We sold... In 2015, single-family homes, which is what that statistic was, yep. 1,313. Okay. Now, that's off 7% from the year before um, in numbers of units sold. However, the average list price went from 260000 261000 to 272000 which is up 4%. Okay. And the average sale price... Went from two fifty six to two sixty nine, which is an increase of five percent. Okay. The market time stayed the same. The sales price to list price stayed the same. So everyone's saying that two thousand fifteen was not a good year in real estate. Yeah. Well, single family homes we didn't sell as many units, but people are getting still seeing appreciation. Yeah, They're still seeing it. It was still a good year, right? Um, Probably because the the number of homes sold is down, probably points to the inventory issue. Points somewhat to the inventory issue. Plus, I think we're seeing some people waiting for the market to crash uh, before they buy. Before they buy, okay. And I'm going to tell you, folks, if that's what you're doing, get a good book because you're going to be waiting a long time. Because they're staring at that oil price that yep. says thirty four dollars a barrel for crude and yeah. you know and we know Bakken sells for a little bit less than that and yep. they're thinking boy if that keeps going down this is going to just tank and yeah, yeah. well it's, it's been be going careful. down for most of 2015 and even though numbers of units are off prices are still appreciating not... we're still appreciating and if you take a look this is 2000 compared to 2014 if you take and look back to 2013 
almost identical. Okay, yeah. So, so it, it, you know, you always have to look at numbers. You can go yep. back to 2000, 2000 if you wanted to, and we'd say, wow, this is awesome. And then you'd have some year in there where it's way below what it was that year. But it's more, you know, is there any kind of trend that keeps going? If Now, yeah. if we start out the first quarter of 2016, the numbers are way off. Okay, well, you know, what does that tell us? We don't know what that would tell us necessarily, but it you'd have to take a closer look at what's occurring. If it's because of oil and is the market crashing or not, you know, we don't know, but yeah. Yeah, and, and looking at December, it's kind of the same deal. A number of units sold in Bismarck were up way off in Lincoln and off pretty much in Mandan, um, but not significantly. Uh, average price list is up 7%. Sales price is up 6%. No. So that's that's okay. December. And if you look at everything, we're talking land, we're talking apartments, we're talking, or not apartments, we're talking uh, everything but commercial. You know, twin homes, condos, no. okay. land, manufactured housing, we're up 7%. We're off uh, in numbers sold. So, but, so even December was a good month. December was a good month. Yeah. Um, and I, I can relate to that at our office. I mean, we're, we saw terrific reservations come in for loans from the lenders for December. I mean, way more than what we expected. So, yeah. yeah. And the number of, of permits uh, is pretty constant. It's off a little, but not mm-hmm. much. No. So that means we're going to have okay. new homes on the market again. I, come springtime, should be good. Yeah, we'll have to see. These homes will be built. Yeah. Yep. And be ready to go. Okay, so that's that's good news. That's nice way to go, man. You know, bring yeah. bring bring the happiness to the well, to the show. <laughs> bring the joy. Here's the joy because yeah. it's a happy new year, right? It is happy okay. new year. Okay. Oh, we're gonna. Here's some more joy. You here's gave more joy. Me this, this, actually, you well, gave me this. This is joy that we're not in New York. Folks, be glad you don't live in Nassau County, New York State. Wow. And thanks to the and thanks to the Realtor Association. Yep. We aren't going to have fees like friends. this in North Dakota. Yeah, we had a we got a constitutional amendment passed that outlaws any private or or public uh, fees attached to the sale of a home. Okay, so now what are they transfer fees or mortgage? Fees. What are they doing in Nassau County in New York? In Nassau County, they are raising their real estate fee to offset a budget shortfall. Oh my! So that if you buy or sell a home, you're going to help them recover from yeah, yeah. their overspending. Yeah, above and beyond the property taxes you're probably paying in Nassau County. Yep. Yeah. They're calling it a tax uh, a tax map verification fee. They have <laughs> a, a lot of terms for them. Okay. Uh, it's going to go from $75 to $225. Oh, my. The county clerk rec- block recording fee from 150 to 300 They expect it to bring in $35.6 million in new revenue. So... My math skills aren't the greatest, but that sounds like about a 200% increase. Yeah, I think your math skills are pretty good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Every once in a while, they kick in. Yep. So that means that $1,100, they're going to add to the cost of a $50,000 mortgage. $50,000 mortgage? $1,100. Okay. Now, you got to figure Nassau County, New York, $50,000 mortgage is probably, that's a rarity? Yeah. I would guess. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, but I, I'm i just guessing that in New York State, Home prices are a little higher than fifty thousand dollars, and not everybody's got gobs of money to put down in a house. So, yep. Okay, but the Land Title Association—they're fighting it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're, I think they're fighting hard. They actually got the legislature to delay the implementation of the new fees until January fourth of this year. Well, that would be Monday <laughs> from December from December twenty third. Yeah, so a whole two weeks, <laughs> two uh, weeks. Christmas break, yeah, a Christmas right. New Year break there. Yeah, okay. So now, they, and they basically the county just decided to do this with no warning, right? That was like this isn't going to happen six months from now or a year next year. This is like uh, we're just putting it on starting right now. Yep, sounds looks like they decided yeah. on December twenty third. Yeah, and then they're getting a whole reprieve till yeah last monday this past monday so yeah and this um, isn't you know this isn't uh folks this isn't unusual there's 35 states that have some kind of a transfer fee. yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't and we won't yeah. so. and and this would apply to what the realtor association spearheaded here it, it, this this is exactly the type of tax this that is the reason will be why prevented. yep plus yeah. there's another uh transfer fee that 
that we have in legislation. We didn't put it in the Constitution. It's, it, it is in legislation that prohibits uh, transfer fees on a, a private person's transfer fees. The common term for it is the Trump tax. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's uh, developers who put a in, into their uh, bylaws laws that any time a property is sold in one of their developments, they get a oh yes fee. okay. So Donald Trump is he was famous, famous for it. Yeah. Well, he was a, so the, like an original that did right. This. Oh. So Trump Towers in New York City. If I were to buy one of those condos in Trump Towers in mm. New York City now, and I'm probably the tenth person to buy it. Say, yeah, Trump still gets two percent of the sale price. Oh boy, whoa! So, well, no, that that, <laughs> but he's just one. I mean, it's it's rampant in New York and yeah, Florida, and yeah. you know, but it's not going to happen. But here. of course, they attach the name to somebody that sure. everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, to make it sound worse because Schlemovitz doesn't work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, we can't spell that. <laughs> Trump, we can spell. Um, no. Well, no. Should we be worried though if Trump would become president that he decides? Well, that works for everybody else. We'll just that worked at Trump Towers. We should do it across the country. Well, nobody can stop a federal tax, but Trump's yeah. is not a tax. It's a fee. It's a fee. Well, yeah, you know, it's a, a fee. I, yeah. And I don't know that. The, no. the, I don't know. We'll see. I, I can't imagine that it's something that's going to be real popular. But yeah. Yeah. At least in North Dakota, it's not going to happen. Okay, well, thank thank you for that. You're welcome. That's that's good work that you did there. Um, I, it, you know, the the fee thing, and that that's happened before in other uh, uh, municipalities yeah. and stuff where mm-hmm. they just well, it's not a tax; it's a fee. Yeah. Uh, well, really, it's not insurance; uh, it's tax. It's a tax, <laughs> or it's insurance; it's not a tax, or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you you call things, and because. The way the laws are written, they can do that. They can charge the fee. They can't do the tax without having a vote on it, probably. Yeah. But they can make it a fee, and there we go. Yeah, yeah we're also fighting. We're, we're heading to a break here, so I'll be real yeah. quick. But we're also fighting what's called G fees. Oh, well, yes. We've talked about that level. before We've here. talked about that before. Yeah. And it looks like we're going to win that one. Yeah, now. that looks good that they're not going to extend the G fee increase right. like they were talking about to pay for the highway bill. Right, right, correct. Yeah, yeah. pay for highway stuff. So, all right, we're going out on uh, oh, a Loggins and Messina song. Happy birthday, Kenny! Your mama can't dance. Right now, it's twenty-one. News headlines and weather together, live on Super Talk twelve seventy. All right, back on Dakota Housing Network. Dave Floor, Greg Larson, Jim Walsh, and this is uh, it was Steve Perry. Oh, Steve Perry's got a voice yeah. from Journey. He's good. All right, uh, celebrating Kenny's birthday. Sixty-eight years old today. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, um, Greg. We are going to continue. You got some national statistics to kind of keep up with well, our. Uh, I got state statistics. Oh, you got state statistics. Yeah, these okay. are the year ends. Year end. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> By the way, just, got, just because it's a really important for you to know this. day of, okay. On January 7th in 1927, the Harlem Globetrotters played their first game. Ooh, well, and Meadowlark Lemon just passed away. Yeah, we just lost just Meadowlark just lost about a week ago. Did you ever see him? I did. I saw him in person also in Grand Forks, I believe it was. Yep. I yeah. saw him a couple of times. I actually got to meet him Ooh, many, nice. many years ago. What an entertainer. Yep. They said that he probably could have played... You know, did NBA. Play. I mean, he was good enough to be a star in the NBA. That's how good yeah. a basketball player he well, was. Well, that's what Will Chamberlain said. Yeah. Will said well, that Mel Lark was one of the best all around basketball players well, and he had Wilt, ever seen. And Will played with him on the, yeah. on the Globetrotters. Yeah. That's where Will started was yeah. with the Globetrotters. Yeah. Out of, out of college, he went there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he was good enough, but he wanted to entertain like yep. he did. Yeah. And, yeah. So that was a sad day. He was, he's a good, yeah. great, great guy, yep. great entertainer. All right. So. So here we are. We're looking at some statistics for the state. Now, these just closed out. Um, we're looking at average prices uh, and median prices. Statewide in 2013, the average price was 202000 for a single-family home. 202000 Median price was one eighty four nine. Now, okay. median is uh, that house is priced right in the middle. Yep. There's... Yeah. 
X number below and X number above. Right. So that's a number we look at because it's it's probably a better picture because you sell one million dollar house and it carries the average up high. Right. Yep. So we'll say one eighty four nine was a median price. Remember the the price we used in those national statistics they had one seventy nine. So pretty close. Pretty close. Yep. Okay. In 2014, it was 202000 median price. In 2015, 214000 So we're trending upward. Uh, the median price is up 15.9% over two years, mm-hmm. which is good. Um, and the uh, average sales price is up uh, 12%. So okay. uh, what that's telling you, just looking at that real quick, is there aren't as many low-end houses. Yeah. And right. there aren't as many high end houses, yeah. so we're compressing back the, so they're closer. The everything you know just confirms what <clears throat> I think everybody sees out there. Yeah, in, I don't know what the right term is, but you know, anecdotally, you know, there's not many houses below two hundred thousand, and this and, and there's definitely no longer it. many above five hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's healthy for the market. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. So here's. Uh, we're talking about listings, new active listings, new pendings, again, because that's one we can relate mm-hmm. to, and then new sold. So in 2013, we had uh, 10,475 active listings. That's okay. homes that were listed for sale statewide. In 14, it was 10,585. And in 2015, it's 10,000, I think it's 960. So we're getting more houses on the market. Okay. That's, again, a good thing because we were market short. Mm-hmm. That will push prices to level off a little bit, yeah, keep yeah. prices stable. Um, our pendings, uh, we had 7,700 7, pending houses and 7,700 houses sold in 2013. 8,070 pendings and 8,022 sold in 14. Again, that's up. Then 2015, we have at the end of the year 7,015 pending houses, okay. and 6,974 sold houses. Okay, so down from minor 14. Minor tick down. Well, down from 14, uh, a minor tick down from 13. Okay, and that's statewide basis. Statewide basis. Yep. So, okay. you know, we have a good solid market. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting active listings, so our inventory is raising, which helps. Uh, Level out prices, but if you look at the median prices and the average prices, they're all appreciating. So it's a healthy market. Mm-hmm. It's not a fast market. Yeah, that's that's so, what we want to see. That's good for that's what we want to see. You know, sellers. If you're selling your house, you might think, "Well, I don't like that. I'd like to have a fast market." But really, you want a steady market. Yeah, and, and the average days in the market, and this is days from listed to contracted, not listed to closed. Mm-hmm. Average days in the market is 72 statewide and 76 in Bismarck, Mandan. Okay. National average is 90. Okay. So, so yeah. it's still a quick market. So we're, we're a quick market compared yeah. to the national. It's kind of that old market. deal. We're on a super high that was uh, set for 75 miles an hour speed limit, and we've gone from 90 to 85. Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right, so let's change uh, the focus a little Alrighty. bit here. Okay, now we have a presidential election coming up this year. We do. Yeah, if no one's noticed. Oh, I, I thought uh, folks were already giving it to somebody. It was a, it was a giveaway. Oh, no, no, they're going to have to fight for it. They have to vote. Yeah, we oh, have to vote. Okay. All right. We have to vote. Now, I, I have an article here about uh, Ben Carson, who is one of the Republican candidates for president. And this is kind of related to housing because he's talking about uh, FHA, the Federal Housing Administration, which we are all very fond of here at the Dakota Housing Network. Um, now, I don't. Ben's kind of slipped in the polls a little bit. Yeah, lately it's kind of yeah. it's kind of sounds more like it's Trump and Ted Cruz are kind of the front runners at the moment, and it kind of changes. <laughs> yeah, everyone's. We'll see. What, of course, when, nobody's when, voted yet. When is Iowa? They have their caucus. Thing. February when, something. February. Okay, so then we'll. I think, kinda, we're, I think we're six weeks away. Is that right? Do you know Jim? He does it somewhere. Okay, Jim. Jim, He's, you're a master. Not in well, not in politics. Yeah. Okay, not in politics though. That's okay. Doesn't matter. But it's coming up. up. Yeah. And then we got New Hampshire after that, and then a bunch of other states. So, but really, Iowa, New Hampshire will probably get a pretty good idea who the front runners right. are if there's two or three, right, or something. Okay. So anyway, Ben Carson, he could he still got a chance. He could still be yes. in the in the in the hunt here. 
Well, what what uh, Mr. Carson would like to do if he is elected president is he wants to start a secret shopper program for federal agencies. So this is like you know a like secret McDonald's, shopper. You, know. you get well, we got we just got one for Taco Bell in our. Oh mail. yeah. <laughs> Instead, if we go to Taco Bell and then we fill out the survey and then yeah. we would get a, a coupon for a free meal. Of course, the trick is there you have to go to Taco Bell. You have Bell. to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> and eat, Nothing eat against there. Taco Bell. But you have to go there and eat. Cheap and joke. You, and you do the survey and you get a free a coupon. Okay. So Ben Carson would like to do this for federal agencies. And he first the first one he chose was Federal Housing Administration. Okay. That he would start at. Um, you know, what he says is when you have a problem and you go to the FHA and you talk to somebody and it takes you four hours before they blow you off and you don't get anything done, I want to know about those kinds of things, he said. So and he wants to, it's, just, it's a way to monitor the federal agencies and how they are performing for the public, which they are supposed to serve. Okay. So he's talking about putting a plant, basically, that would work at the agency but be a part of the secret shopper program. A mole. It w- a mole, <laughs> yeah. By the way, the caucus is February 1st. February 1st. Okay. Monday the 1st. Okay. There we go. All Thank right. you. Thank you, Jim. Um, so, that, I mean, it's an interesting idea. You know, it's kind of, you know, they have the whistleblower program now, I think, if you work at a federal agency, if you blow the whistle, you can't get fired and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, basically, you know, and he's saying you wouldn't have to have a lot of them because as long as the agencies knew there could be somebody out there, would they improve their job performance because they know they're being watched, so to speak. And, you know, the guy next to them might be the secret shopper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I, ben, it, ben comes from a totally different aspect. of the, I mean, he's a, a physician by trade, yep. a wonderful surgeon from all accounts, I, you know, one of the best in the country, a, a neurosurgeon, I believe. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, but I, I he, he just he has a different perspective on things. I think, and this is probably one of them, is to have a secret shopper at federal agencies. I can think of a couple of agencies, other agencies I go to first. First, yeah. Yeah. EPA, EPA maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe. Okay, that'd, that'd maybe be my the first. Corps of Engineers. Corps of Engineers. Okay, all right. No offense to anybody that works for those places, but no. Nope. This is talking about federal. Yeah. At the big house in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put them out there. All right. Now another thing. Uh, we'll finish up here. We got a couple minutes or so. Um, Jobs in the next decade. Where if you are in high school or college now and you aspire that someday you you know what your career might be, but then have a career that also will enable you to have a shelter over your roof and buy a house if you want one and, and et cetera and afford the rent. And rent's not cheap either these days. Here's where the most of the jobs are going to be, and a lot of this is due to the aging of our society. Okay, uh, healthcare support uh, is a good one. Healthcare practitioner, personal care. Those are the top three uh, where the employment is going to increase, uh, you know, the top one healthcare support by 23% in the next uh, six, eight years. Um, and computer and math, so become obviously an IT person or something to do with math, et cetera. Uh, community social services, again, tied to aging population. Um, construction, hopefully we're building more houses. There you go. Um, so those are all good jobs. Um, that'll help you buy a house if you get go into those fields. That's going to help you buy. And a house now that in the Jim future. has his master's, why well, his job is secure. So yeah. because as those job needs are go up, guess what? Salaries are going to go up. There you it's go. Called wage sure pressure, also. right? Yep. yep. Jim's hoping for that. So all right. Thanks for listening. Okay. Next week uh, we'll see if Joe is back in the Joe Mobile and will be in studio telling us if he found the lowest interest rate next Okay, week. sounds we'll good. See. And right. we'll have an update on Lucy the Goose. Well, oh, great. Very good. We, <laughs> we will look forward to that and see what happened to Lucy. All, All right. right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>